today's big finish Torchwood monthly range review, we are taking a trip down into the London Underground as I take a look at Tube Strike as written by Gareth David Lloyd. Featuring Torchwood's very own graceless gangling git. Oh, wait, no, hang on. Turns out that was just one of Tommy's Torchwood field reports. Featuring Torchwood's very own Yanto Jones, as portrayed by Gareth David Lloyd in his early days at Torchwood 1. And he's learning the ropes from Tommy. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, he's a star employee. And as the rather stunning cover art by Sean Longmoor suggests, this release does of course contain weevils in all of their snarling, grisly, bloody glory. Therefore, this release is not suitable for younger listeners. It does feature strong language, particularly from Tommy, of course. I was absolutely delighted when this story was announced, mainly because we hear the return of the Weevils, one of my favourite TV Torchwood concepts, and one of which that hasn't surprisingly been used much by Big Finish to date, with the exception of the likes of Corpse Day. They are mysteriously hidden from the cover, but I think there is enough time that has passed to kind of reveal spoilers that they're in that story as well. A very unique Weevil episode, which you will of course know if you've listened to that very horrific story. I was also very excited for this one, as the main range is providing a specifically Torchwood 1 themed episode, with the debut of Tommy within the range. Tim Bentink has been a hilarious joy within the Torchwood 1 box sets so far. I am really glad that we are both seeing more of him, but also showcasing him hopefully to a wider audience within the main range releases. And if you enjoyed Tube Strike and you haven't explored the Tortured One series as of yet, this is your cue to do so. Because if you enjoy the dynamic that you hear within this one, there is so much more of it within that range. So Gareth David Lloyd himself has written this story along with the next two releases within the main range as well, and this creates the perfect opportunity to deliver a character piece focused around Yanto's first few weeks in Torchwood. This is, in fact, his first experience of Weevils, which is a nice novelty to hear, and Tommy also hints towards Torchwood 3 in Cardiff as well, so it's a great prequel contextually for the character, with a number of great references along the way. Again, this embraces one of the other novelties of the Tortured range, hearing a very established character, as in Yanto, actually learning the ropes of Torchwood within his very early days in the organisation. So Tommy takes Yanto on nightly missions across London, dealing with weevil incidents on the London Underground, which are highly likely to be the reason behind people going missing, probably when the weevils get a little bit hungry. As the behind the scenes suggest, this is basically an American werewolf inspired drama, and it's actually quite scary at points. Yanto and Tommy's mission is to deal with the dodgy weevils and take them back to Torchwood's captivity, but Tommy is kind of posing Yanto as the bait. How nice. They are, of course, a rather effective team, but undeniably things go a little bit wrong. Tommy needs to intervene, and it's very, very funny. It's a great way to open this story. Yanto and Tommy are, without a doubt, chalk and cheese. The relationship that they have is frankly addictive to listen to. They are the spirit of the story, and I love how their gradually developing relationship as colleagues informs the narrative itself. I don't think Tommy will be for everyone, but I absolutely love him. I can't lie. He's very sweary, loves a good alliteration and he's just not perfect. He's a very imperfect person, but brilliant for Torchwood. He gets the job done, even if it's not in the most polished way. Especially when you compare him to the likes of Avon, I think it's just baffling how they both somewhat get on. Again, it's a very love-hate relationship between them. Over the Torchwood 1 range in particular, I've become very protective, I'll be honest, of his character. He absolutely has charm, and, I mean, he refers to the weevils as grizzly nutsacks. What else do you want from a Torchwood character, really? It would be very odd if I said that Yanto wasn't written well within this story, given the pen behind the words. As always, with Gareth's writing, I love how he taps into key moments within Yanto's career. He is still learning the ropes, he's very sarcastic at points, muttering quite a lot under his breath to the frustration of the surrounding characters, and he's also very unaware of the ins and outs of Torchwood at this point, and of course the ominous revolving door of employees who meet their end. That said, this story also illustrates his intelligence as well, the problem solving in panicked situations. Yanto brings the emotion, Tommy brings the action, the jokes, and Tommy's rule on how to do things, which is not necessarily the best way on how to do things, but again, he gets the job done. 
The production and sound design on this one is absolutely standout. Blair Moat and the way that he integrates the incredibly realistic London Underground sound effects into the music score is very impressive, while Shane's sound design places the listener right into the heart of the London Tube network, with the weevils hot on the passenger's tail. Very much like Torchwood Poppet from January 2024, I actually listened to Tube Strike twice, and when revisiting the story, it was actually really fun to acknowledge the music score a little bit more and actually realise how ingenious it is. I think that once you hear the tube train screeching integrated into the music, it's so clever. It also excellently breaks up the scenes and then moves the plot forward. Even just the little references to actual real things like Transport for London, the way that they create and burrow the holes underneath the city, it all feels very real and as a result adds a certain authentic flavour to this story that I imagine if you're a London local, you'll probably be able to appreciate it. And I think especially when you complement this with the train sound effects, the overhead announcements, and then you have the weevil growls in there as well, echoing between the London tube tunnels. I think that this allows for a really immersive experience, and one of which that really places the listener in the centre of that action. In fact, even the support characters breathe life into this story. Kay Bridgman as tube driver Tia, her vivacious, bouncy tube announcements automatically embody that slightly crazed madness of a tube driver who's been locked in the underground of London for a long, long shift with absolutely no one to talk to. She is in fact in the trailer for this release on the website, and I highly recommend checking it out, simply just to hear how authentic and bizarre she sounds. She really adds a grit touch to this narrative overall. The journey that the character goes on in particular is hilarious, whilst also very heartbreaking. She's troubled, but she makes the best out of the worst, and this story isn't the best kind of day for the vast majority of people, but the way that she interacts with those more knowledgeable than her, I think that she brings something to the episode that makes her far more than just a support character, because she does try to see the positive in things, but she's also very, very determined to contribute herself and make things better for others. And I think that Gareth has really got the balance with Tube Strike overall. There is grim, bleak bits, the blood, the gore, lots of wet sound effects, which faultlessly replicates the the sound of death, it's safe to say, how delightful, but also in sheer contrast there is lots of great gags in there as well. I think the ending of the story also perfectly symbolises this, I think. Bill, as portrayed by Derek Elroy, also leaps off the page. I think it's really clever how Gareth has again incorporated Bill directly into the narrative, but also utilised the character to dig into Tommy's past. This gives the story a really rewarding, but also rare glimpse into Tommy's history, which has a regular listener to Tortured One, this is very welcome indeed. And especially for Yanto as well, still being essentially in his Torchwood training, I think Tommy coming face to face with someone who he knows from a past life prior to his enrolment in Torchwood, I think it's quite interesting to see someone who is completely outside of that world interacting with Tommy and saying straight to their face how much they have changed and how mysterious their life has become. I guess rather cleverly, this also foreshadows the future Fianto as well. I feel like it's only fair that I also credit Robert too for completing the cast. His weevil roars and groans are essentially a soundscape sprinkled throughout the entirety of this release, really adding to the horror. The scene that they surround the tube train in particular is very chilling. Personally, I would have loved to hear a little bit more from them, maybe a bit more closer interaction, but the way that he gives them personalities through roars alone in this story is very impressive. Maybe the episode could have started with one of the characters that is referred to going missing, so he could have started the episode brutally with a weevil murder or something like that to really set the tone of the release because it's all very bloody from there. But I think rather cleverly this story does start to develop the weevils further and sort of showcase them as a species that is living in a very different world to that of Cardiff, and I think just the utilisation of them in the underground network of London is just inspired, it's perfect. The plot itself is relatively simple, they basically get stuck on a tube train and the weevils are out for the hunt and they decide to push the train off the track and they need to make do from there and try and escape to the surface. And it's a very claustrophobic story, I think, and it obviously throws in lots of obstacles along the way. It's really intriguing how Gareth has integrated so many references into the plot. We have retcon in there, constant referrals back to actual Tortured One and Canary Wharf and Avon. 
Again, I think that this really adds to the reality of the story and the fact that when this event is done and dusted, they need to report back to Canary Wharf and, you know, debrief, I suppose. But without a doubt, as much as I enjoyed hearing a less experienced Yanto within this story, I think that the show was undoubtedly taken by good old Tommy. Good old Tommy. I do love Tommy. I think as well having the focus on these two characters and their relationship is really important and now we can listen to wider releases the likes of Torchwood One's box sets and know a little bit more about that early relationship between Tommy and Yanto and I think the importance of it because yes it is a rocky ride, yes it is an imperfect relationship but they do look out for each other and there is many layers to that relationship which again makes it feel more real. Are you forgetting it? Just try to rip you to shreds. Of course not. It's all you're being is instincts. It's obviously the nature to hunt, like lions. Oh, God, yeah. Soft, creamy shit. It's not a lion, it's a weevil. So overall for Tube Strike, I loved it. I really do like this story, and I'm thoroughly looking forward to the next instalment of the Yanto trilogy, of course, coming next month. I do believe the next story is Missing Molly. It looks like a Yanto solo mission. But for now, this release was another fun, immersive, grim, but most importantly, pretty hilarious instalment of a range that I'm continuing to absolutely love.